power. My name is Annie Pasquinelli, and on today's episode of Superhero Saturday, we're going to talk about the new year. Yep, it's gonna be the Roaring Twenties again. I thought it would be a good time to take a little retrospective. I know 100 sounds like a big number, but 100 years in the context of history is not actually a very long time. Back then, many people had cars, phones, and even went to see the movies. Oregon State University had already been around for more than 50 years, although I believe at the time it was called Oregon Agricultural College. And Betty White was alive! Did you know that 100 years ago, in the year 1920, women had only just achieved the right to vote in America? In the context of the thousands of years of human history, 100 years is hardly the blink of an eye, especially when it comes to dismantling oppression. As you're thinking of New Year's resolutions and what you're going to do with the next decade of your life, I submit that we as creators challenge ourselves to write better female characters. There are plenty of great ones, but for today's demonstration, I'm going to take one of my childhood favorites, Charlie's Angels, the movie from the year 2000. The story of Charlie's Angels is that it was an iconic and groundbreaking television show back in the 1970s. Three kick butt ladies shooting bad guys and looking fabulous while doing it. Talk about my dream team. Sure, they received their orders from a man's voice talking out of a little speaker box, but they had free reign to do whatever they needed to do to get their mission complete. And definitely the inspiration for other characters in my own universe. There have been many ripoffs of the template they used to create the three main characters including several other shows that I enjoyed as a child, including Totally Spies and The Powerpuff Girls. The problem is, this formula has become so diluted over the years that it's absolutely cringeworthy when someone uses it incorrectly. When three women are the central characters in a story, they tend to follow this trope of the three central poles of quote-unquote femininity. Brains, brawn, and beauty. If we line up these characters for examples, you can see that the formula fits perfectly right across the board. For Brains, we have Blossom, Alex, and Sam. For Brawn, we have Buttercup, Dylan, and Alex. And for Beauty, we have Bubbles, Natalie, and Clover. The Brains, Brawn, and Beauty concept are a classic way to differentiate between a three-person cast of almost any kind. The problem is it often takes the idea of womanhood and strips it down to these three concepts only. Essentially what they're saying is if you're a woman, you're either a brawn, a brain, or a beauty. There's often no wiggle room to be something else. There are of course rare examples of differences, but when the vast majority of female-led teams fall into this template, it gets tiring after a while. And once you see the pattern, it's really hard to unsee it. Sorry, super friends. You're gonna have to live with my burden now. What Charlie's Angels 2000 did was change the complexity of those three tropes. Sure, it's easy to see Dylan as the brawn, Natalie as the beauty, and Alex as the brain. But I actually see it as something different, a better representation of womanhood in storytelling. And that is intensity, independence, and innocence. Let's take these one by one. Dylan kicks butt and loves doing so. But really, they all do, and in terms of fighting skill, she isn't necessarily the clear frontrunner of the group. Rather than simply acting as the big gun, we see Dylan as the rebel. She does what she wants, and only what she wants. And she won't stand for injustice or mistreatment, like in her introductory montage when she hits her jerk of a commanding officer in the face when he goes too far. She falls for the bad guy because he plays the victim so well, and she wants to protect him. But she's not a punching machine. She simply wants to be free, and for others to be free too. She is independence. Natalie, while bubbly and bouncy and quote unquote girlish, is far from a dumb blonde. In fact, one of her core character flaws is that she doesn't understand her own beauty. In her montage, she started out life as a huge nerd, braces and acne and all. Sure, she became good looking and is portrayed as being physically attractive to many of the male bystanders, but this isn't a shallow, ugly duckling story. Her natural beauty comes from living her life as herself, humble and happy, confident and utterly capable. She is not merely attractive on the outside. She doesn't care so much what other people think. She's just living her best life. She is innocence. 
Alex, on the other hand, understands that she doesn't fit into the traditional concept of womanhood. And with every ounce of her impressive willpower, she tries to achieve it, mostly through bad cooking, being docile and gentle with her boyfriend, and playing herself down so that she's not so intimidating. Her genius level intellect slips through every now and then, but she's not necessarily any smarter than her colleagues. What she does have is an insane amount of discipline, dedication, and laser sharp focus. When she sets her mind to something, she doesn't let up until the mission is complete. She does whatever it takes to get the job done. She isn't merely a brain, she is intensity. These three elements are essential facets of true femininity. And by focusing on this character development, the team behind this story turned a movie that could have been a fantasy-driven sex capade into a bastion of womanhood that acknowledges the sexism in operation in our culture, yet rises above it. It takes the brains, beauty, and brawn trope and reclaims it from the male gaze. It doesn't just subvert this golden trio formula, it dismantles it entirely. So as we make our way into the roaring 20s, I challenge us as creators to build on the progress that we've made in the last hundred years and make even better stories representing women in media. It's time that we capitalize on a market that is so much more open to female-led storytelling because of great works like Charlie's Angels. And I hope you guys as creators will join me in this fight. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, you can go ahead and give us a thumbs up. And if you want to see even more awesome content every single week, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so that you can see more superhero content every week. And if you want to join the Fearless Nine team, go ahead and hop on over to Patreon and become a supporter. Thanks, super friends, and we'll see you next week.